I'm Dr. Lori, and we've got guests galore, all kinds of folks. We are taping this. We are taping this live right now. This is Ask Dr. Lori. I don't know what's coming. Everything's unscripted. Here's my guest. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi. How are you? Good. This is I got to... Daniel. Daniel yeah. from New Hampshire. Yep, that's right. Are I you seeing? To... Are, are all of you guys seeing? I'm trying to remember all <laughs> because we're getting more and more of you, right? So I'm happy that you're all using your technology well and you're getting on with the live. Daniel and I also did a video call recently. Yep. We talked about some works of art of his. So tell me, Daniel, what's happening today? Well, I have brought um, another piece that I inherited, this lithograph, um, this Toulouse-Lautrec uh, lithograph. Let me try to get it centered. There you go. Very nice. So you inherited a Toulouse-Lautrec lithograph. Now, Toulouse-Lautrec has a very distinctive mark. It's round with his T and his L. Do you have the round Toulouse-Lautrec mark or do you have a signature of some sort? Uh, let's see. Can you see that? I do see it. So come closer. Do, do, All right. Do, and focus. Stop. I want you folks to see this because these marks are no different than a Meissen mark or a Hummel mark or a Nippon mark. This is, of course, the artist Cypher and that particular mark. Oh, over. Move it over. <laughs> You're doing fine. Do it over to your right. There you go. Many of you are doing a lot better than you have. So that piece is the cipher of Toulouse-Lautrec. Now, you may not know that unless you have a PhD in art history or you've studied Toulouse-Lautrec for a long time. Mm. That piece is worth about $1,200, a typical Toulouse-Lautrec print, right? Oh, wow. It is a lithograph. It's in an acid mat. And right there, you yes. see that brown line yep. right there? This is what to look for. Yes, it's based on actual sales records. This is what to look for right there. That's an acid mat. That means that piece has been in that frame probably at least since the 1950s or before. Hmm. The mat needs to be changed out. The frame is fine. Can you go back and can we look at the whole piece again so everybody can get a good yeah. look? There we go. Very typical, the figures of Toulouse-Lautrec. Um, of course, painting in the late 19th century. That's a nice piece. If you hang it on a wall, make sure it doesn't have direct sunlight. So Excellent. that's wonderful. Really a nice piece. That's great. Nice to see you. Nice to see Likewise. you. Hey, Daniel, Thank you so much. How, yeah. did the, how did the video call go for you? Oh, fantastic. Highly was recommend. It, was yeah. it easy to do? Yep. It was very easy to do. It was awesome getting to learn more about what I had as well as um, giving myself well, feeling good about something I was interested in purchasing. So that was awesome as well. <laughs> okay. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad it's easy, of course, to yeah. book right on the website. And it was nice to talk with you here too. So thanks so much for being with me. Thank I'm you so Dr. Lori. You're welcome, honey. And uh, my guests are here. We're looking at your objects, art, antiques, and collectibles. And I'm giving you tips about what to look for, how to identify valuables, how to spot a bargain, how to leave something that's junk at the estate sale or the yard sale or the thrift store. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. Hi, Dr. Lori, how are you? Good, thanks for being my guest. What's your name? My name is Joanne. Nice to see you, Joanne. Nice to see you. I have this hat pin. Oh, that's nice. That is tested to be a ruby. Okay. Well, it's a big ruby, let me tell you that. It is big. It is I big. printed out a size of gemstones. It says it's a carat and a half. I would, I would believe that it's on a 14 karat gold stick pin, which those stick pins are, are popular in the early 1900s prior to 1925. So is it marked 14 K your stick? No, pin? no okay. marks on it anywhere. Okay. All right. So it how did you, him. it was my, my mother gave it to me. So it was either her mother's or oh. her grandmother's. I do yeah. not know. My mother is now deceased. So I would, I would put that probably to your grandmother only because 1910 to 1925, mm -hmm. probably your grandmother. Um, at least, I don't know about a great grandmother, depending on how long that great grandmother might've lived, but probably at least a grandmother and value on the stone will need to be identified with respect to, of course, its quality. So quality of the stone will have to be identified by a GIA certified um, evaluator. It's usually a jeweler. Yes, you know it's a ruby, but they have to know where, where does it fall with rubies. So right. you're probably, just for the ruby alone, just for the stone alone, you're going to be at several thousands of dollars. So that's a nice piece. Yeah, That's gorgeous. All so, right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you're welcome. you. You're welcome. I've got a question of the day for you. You're going to the movies and there's two actors who are in different movies, Brad Pitt or George Clooney. Which movie do you pick? Uh, George Clooney. 
George Clooney. Okay, yep. nice to see you. So when I say, you know, several thousands, between a thousand and ten thousand, somewhere in there for that, of course, Ruby. Is that a wide range? Yes, that's a wide range because you need an on site lab to evaluate how good that Ruby is. There are lots of Rubies out there, there are lots of different stones, and they're all different in terms of how good they are. So she'll go and get it checked by an on-site lab that's GIA certified and she'll know the value of that ruby. That's a very nice piece. Stick pins, very popular early 20th century. Hi, it's Dr. Lori, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you doing? I'm good, what's your name? Um, my name is Sarah. Um, Hi, Sarah. I'm, I'm from Stevensville, Michigan. Okay, and where is Stevensville? Near um, what? So it's basically, if this is Michigan, there's the mitt. <laughs> There's the mitt, right? Yep. yep. Oh, okay. Okay. So show me what you have, hon. Okay. So I got this at an estate sale. Um, so that's a watercolor. It's nicely done. It looks like it's signed. You know, a little winter landscape with, a, I guess, a pole barn of some sort. Yeah. What, um, who's the signature? Um, Probably a local artist. It says French. Oh, it says French. Okay. All right. So um, this piece, how much did you pay for it? Um, I paid six. It was originally listed for 12. Mm. Yeah, it's worth about $35. 35 okay. And that's straightforward. Yes, it's a nice piece, but, you know, nothing to write home about. It's a typical okay. quality watercolor, but in the market, there's a lot of those out there, so they won't go too high, right? Okay. So can I look at the thing again so I can teach yes. somebody a couple things? Absolutely. There we go. First of all, you've got that frame, which is a typical Nielsen style frame. That was a brand name in the 70s. You'll notice that there isn't a mat board for it, so it should have a mat because the glass right up against the artwork will damage the artwork. You should have spacers wow. or a mat in between. That's important. But again, a lot of artists who are just starting out or have a, a way that they like to do it, they make this sort of square or rectangle and then they paint within it. So it's kind of a visual mat. Those artists are usually the artists who aren't going to invest enough money to get it properly matted. So it needs to be matted. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Hey, George Clooney or Brad Pitt, if you're at the movies, who do you pick? Uh, probably Brad Pitt. I love Interview with a Vampire, so. Oh, okay, okay. Good to see you. You too. Thanks, Thanks for being with me. My guests are here. I'm Dr. Lori. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. The newsletter is a great opportunity and a great way for you to learn more, right? And it also will show you all different types of things that we're doing here. It's at drlorivcom You just sent right in your email. And then, of course, when we send out the newsletter, you'll be on the list and you'll get it automatically. You don't have to do anything else. Great. Here's my next guest. Hi, Dr. Hi. Lori. Hi, how are you? I'm good. What's your name? My name is Gail. I'm from Indiana, but currently in Pennsylvania with my grandson who was just born. Oh, congratulations. That's always fun. It's <laughs> right? exciting. Good, exciting. So what's his first name? His name is Theo. Theodore. Oh, Theo, wonderful. Well, congratulations mm. to you and your growing family. So, Thank you. Hey, Gail, what do you want to show me today? My daughter has this piece of furniture here. 1920s sideboard. If she shows you the legs, they're going to be these bulbous legs that are sometimes called trumpet legs in what's called the Jacobean revival style. You need to show them something now, Gail. I've got to see the object. Okay. All right. There you go. A little better. A little better. Good. Stop. Try not to move. This is the Jacobean revival. That means it's looking at the Jacobeans, which, of course, the English style of the 1920s. It looks like it has original hardware, applied elements, so those applied wooden pieces. It has a drawer for usually linen or maybe your silver, and then it oftentimes has two panels too. And those two panel doors on either side are usually for shelving, like storage of, of plates and such. And one of them might open and it might just be open. That's called a cellaret or a cellar for liquor, uh, wine, that kind of thing, but a cellaret to keep something cold. That sideboard dates to the 1920s. How'd she acquire it? She picked it up on the side of the road. Yeah, the side of the road. So out of the trash, she got it, right? Dumpster yep. diving out of the trash. That's right. That piece is valued at $275. It's awesome. very nice. 
pretty good for out of the trash. Definitely. And remember, a lot of these pieces people like to repurpose, but before you repurpose, right, make sure that you, in fact, check with me first so you're not repurposing something very, very valuable. So you're not repainting with chalk paint something really valuable. Right. That's a nice piece. 275 out of the trash. Gail, nice to see you. Thank hey, you my so question much. of the day, you're welcome. My question of the day, uh, you're at the movies. Do you see George Clooney or do you pick the movie with Brad Pitt in it? I think I'd go George Clooney. All right. Nice to see you. Thank Congratulations. You so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. And don't forget, of course, video calls. You have an opportunity to do that. But more importantly, my specials and shop page where you're going to find everything. Discounts, we're going to put those there. We're going to list if we're having something special happening. Also, you can, of course, um, look for the Dr. Lori approved merchandise yes i get compensation for the merchandise that you that you purchase through the special and shop page but it's things that you're going to need like your loop or your diamond tester or maybe if you need of course storage uh boxes or maybe you need you know materials for framing whatever it might be but that's going to be on the specials and shop page at drlorev.com yeah. hi it's dr lori how are you hi I'm back. What's, what's your first name? Charlene. Hi, Charlene. So, Charlene, you're in upstate New York. Do you have something to show me? I do. Hold on one minute. I didn't think okay. I was going to be back again. Well, Charlene is back here. Unbelievable. Well, you're lucky, Charlene. I'm very lucky. And you go back and move back away from the camera so I can see the whole piece. So, it looks like an African ebony sculpture. Yes. Well, how did you acquire it? It was given to me by a friend that has an au auction gallery, and there's a small chip. I don't know if you can see it. Just Let's a see tiny it. chip here. Chip at the top. Get it close to the camera. Show the chip close to the camera. There you go. Okay. Now, here's something I want you to see. You notice how the chip, and once it's chipped, sometimes damage can teach you a lot. Right. If you look at the chip, right, it's not white underneath. It, that wood is not a yellow or white color that wood right. is still a dark color which is very important and very good so mm -hmm. if it were white or or a lighter color of the wood it would be worth less because it wouldn't be of course the solid ebony it's a nice piece it's west african probably from ghana uh the west african country of ghana i would say value on that piece is anywhere between about 65 and 85 dollars it's nice based on actual sales records these totem pieces from africa have come into the market since the 1970s and recently in the last 40 50 years you've really seen them go down in value some nice to see okay. you hey my question of the day for you if you're going to the movies do you want to watch brad pitt or george clooney which movie do you choose brad pitt brad pitt me too yeah. Yeah. see ya Thank you. Thanks for showing me that. You're welcome. Sculptures are important and wooden sculptures. They're called direct carvings, right? Uh, the sculptures in Africa that you really want to see. Yes, I've curated exhibitions on African art as well. Um, expert answers to your questions. I'm trying to give you a broad scope because when you're in a thrift store, when you're at a yard sale, when you're going to source items, you don't get the same piece of ceramics all the time and you only see ceramics. You see all different things. So this channel is able to teach you about all different things. African sculpture, for example, when you're looking at totems like that, this idea of interlaced figures, figures that intertwine into one another, is very, very typical of the African um, sculptural form. However, the ones that are most valuable are those that are used in ritual or ceremony. The piece she had is sort of a typical tourist piece from Africa. That's why the value is rather low. Ah, this is Dr. Lori. Thanks for being my guest. I'm Dr. Lori. We are taping... We are taping live. Hi, this is Rowan. Rowan's been on before and she's also done video calls with me privately. So Rowan, tell me, in fact, uh, my question of the day. If you're going to the movies, would you want to see a movie with Brad Pitt or with George Clooney? Who would you pick? George Clooney. George Clooney. Do you have an object for me to take a look at? Uh, yeah, I was startled to Let's get on see. the second Let's slide. see your object. There you go. Oh, okay. So a little Inuit sculpture. It's a nice. little Alaskan thing. Yep. So Inuit Alaska. So basically the, the artists, the artisans are Inuit. It's from Alaska. Is it marked on it? Because a lot of these pieces have a mark that say this is a Native American piece. Okay. 
And that was done to protect the artist and to protect, of course, Native American cultural objects. So it is ivory, looks like it's walrus. It looks like it's in a nice shape. How much did you pay for it? How did you acquire it? Estate sale, $1. Mm. $1 is good for that. Today's market value on a piece, that type of piece based on actual sales records, about 60. Okay. So for a dollar investment, you made 60 times what it's worth. So when you were at the estate sale, did the clerk know or have any idea or was it just in a box with other stuff? It was in a box that was marked uh, everything in this box, $1. Yeah, wow. Sometimes there's the problem of size. People will miss value pieces because they think, well, it's small, so it's not worth that much, right? So now, are you reselling the pieces, Rowan? No, I'm pretty much just a, a random collector. Okay, so you collect different things that are of interest to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. Congratulations, that was a good buy. I'm Dr. Lori, this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. We've been taping live. Thanks for being with me. Thanks to my guests, I'll see you next time.